We started this work in the year 2009, to be precise. But the actual work in terms of um, developing people, uh, starting coffee or other initiatives, took off a year later, at around October 2010. When we started working here, we realized that poverty was so eminent. People were poor. But at the same time, remembering the fact that this is the place where AIDS started in Uganda. And this place, because of that, our people had gotten so much taken into relief. Everything had been given free. So those organizations which came were giving people free stuff. And people had developed that relief from entitlement. But when all the organizations left, they left even without winning the HIV war. So people fell back to disease and poverty. So when we came, we said, no, I think people can deal better with their diseases if they have money in their, their pockets. So we started our transformation work through coffee farming. And as we do that work, me being a pastor, and I know, I saw what other NGOs, the way they had organized the work, I said, okay, let me use an institution where I have authority. So my work, I embedded it into reaching out to communities through the local church. I'm an evangelical Pentecostal pastor. So I used the Pentecostal network of churches to reach out to the families. So our formula is one church, one pastor, one family. So you change one pastor, you change one congregation. When you change one congregation, you change one family, plus other families in the community. So as we speak now, we have developed um, a network of more than 3,000 families. Now, if each one of them, you've given them an acre of coffee, so we have developed over 3,000 acres of coffee. But of course, many other farmers are far beyond one acre because it goes with our statistics of more than 2.8 million seedlings of coffee we have planted. And that has also pushed us to start our own nursery facilities because the demand is high. So that journey has seen us from five farm, seven farmers to 3,000 farmers. It has seen us from one acre of coffee to about 10,000 acres of coffee. It has seen us from uh, 2,100 seed, coffee seedlings to 2.8 million seedlings. It has seen us from uh, having people who are involved in the coffee farming and they don't know marketing to have our own coffee processing plant, establishment of a coffee export system and developing what we call traceability. Traceability is very key in this, in this work because if farmers are traced back, for instance, if I sell a container of coffee somewhere and they find it adulterated, maybe it is smelling petrol or what, if you come to our system here, you we can trace back and say, this container has coffee of so and so and so and so. But along this journey, we got in connection with an association called New Cafe. New Cafe, they introduced us to Abitrust some time back because during our selling of coffee, we didn't have capital. And Abitrust facilitated the New Cafe to extend some funding facilities for us to buy farm coffee and sell it to better markets. That was the first stint we had with Abitrust. It didn't go far. We finished one season and that project ended and maybe it continued somewhere else. But as of now, we are glad to come back to Abitrust, uh, knowing that now we, we heard about the green challenge. Uh, but by that time, we had come to a point of realizing that the environment is ch changing so rapidly. Our coffee farmers are getting stressed with drought. They don't have water. And a few years back, we had innovated our butterfly water catchment system for irrigation. So we said, wait a minute, we can, we can participate in this. And also, we had learned about macadamia tree. We had started planting a coffee, rather a macadamia mother garden, 
that time, it was the right time when we heard about this Green Challenge program. So the Green Challenge came, we applied, we, we put together our concept. Our concept has four major components in it. Component number one is to improve coffee for high yielding. But you cannot improve coffee for high yielding if your coffee can still be stressed by drought. So component number two was water collection, uh, where we, we develop ponds which can collect water between 30 to 40,000 liters of water. So even if the farmer is not farming right at the, the river, he or she can still have enough water to take care of one to two acres of coffee. So component number three of our green challenge, we looked at the macadamia tree to provide us with shed to protect our coffee, with a nut to bring around, to turn around income, with a flower to bring about honey, and with the firewood, because when the trees will grow big, when you prune them, you cut these branches, you can always have a heap of firewood. So that releases pressure from our natural resources. So we looked at the macadamia as a wonder tree for us. And then component number four our, of our green challenge was beekeeping. So we, we integrated all the four together and we, 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 we handed in our proposal to, to Abitrust, and Abitrust considered our concept to be a good one, and here we are. Right now, where we are, we have, our proposal is of 200 farmers. We have so, profiled all the 200 farmers, all of them. We have gotten their consent to go by the standards of the project. The program. Right now, as we speak, our team is already dispatched to train 1,000 farmers. The target farmers on this project is 200. So that is the number we are going to give all the four components. Um, the Green Challenge Fund and Abbey Development, that, that thing is going to, that collaboration, that grant is going to turn around the lives of our people financially. You know, we had to do some math uh, when we, we also, uh, when we got involved in this program. One, we looked at the, the, the outcome of coffee per acre. Okay. When we, we compared, because we have all the data, we compared the out the out put per acre when you have good rains and the outcome per acre when you don't have good rains during drought. So we realized that, look, wait a minute, if this program can support the irrigation systems, the water ponds, the butterfly, it will bring us much, still much more closer to high yields of our coffee if we get normal rains. So we put that math there. And also put math around every one macadamia tree of if a farmer is a very hardworking farm. We benchmarked, went to Amafa farm, and we did a lot of research. Surprisingly, by the time we got in touch with Abbey Development and Green Ch Challenge Fund, some people scattered around the country and started doing macadamia. So we went, we, we saw the macadamia a factory and uh, this huge farm and we asked the financial impact and, um, of, of a, a macadamia tree. If a farmer does well, the macadamia tree can give you 50 to 80 kilos of coffee, of nut in shell, a full year. And another surprising thing is a macadamia tree never ceases to drop a kernel. Every day it drops. It just, have, it just has one peak season but every day it flowers, every day it drops. So we put some math together and at, at Amafa farm, a kilo of nut in shell is 5,000 shillings. But there's a market we are already working with where they buy a kilo in nut at 8,000 shillings. So if I get 80 kilos per tree, let me conservatively put it at 5,000 shillings. That means every year my tree is going to give me 400,000 shillings. 
And in an acre of coffee and macadamia, we put 30 trees of macadamia. So if I have 30 times 5,000 times 8,000 with my enough water plus my coffee and my honey, our calculation, we are targeting a farmer to get not less than 15 million shillings from one acre of integrated coffee, macadamia, and beekeeping. <music>